Hi, this is James C2 and welcome back to the latest in our series of tutorials. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at the product catalogue. Now, the product catalogue is a very powerful feature of Dynamics and it allows you to set up products within your system so that your sales guys can sell them. Now, in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a product catalogue which consists of tyres. So we've set this up, as you'll see, the examples at the bottom are tires, which means when we create an opportunity in our system, we can assign tires to it. So let's show you an example of that. I'm going to create an opportunity. Let's choose a contact. And give it a topic. Looking for some tires. Against this opportunity, I'm going to add a product line. Now, we have our tyres in a price list called tyres. We'll show you how to set that up later on as well. And if I choose to add an existing product, it'll ask me which of the products on that list do I want to sell. So in this case, I'm going to sell a pair of 13580 R15s to this customer. We've also set this up to ask, when we're selling this customer, what type of efficiencies do they want to consider? So, we're looking at the properties. I'm going to set the properties of this product by clicking Edit. I want to see the fuel efficiency this customer would like will be efficiency B, and the wet grip will be efficiency A. And that allows me to record that against this opportunity. So this is example we're going to use. To show you how to set this up, we're going to first of all show you how to set up the ability to sell services alongside these tyres, which will show us how to create our unit groups and our families and our products. We'll also show you how to add a new product so we can show you how the products work with price lists. So let's go ahead with the first bit and look at adding the ability to sell services. So one of the first things we have to do, or what we do have to do first, is go to the settings area and then to product catalog. And you'll see this is broken down into four areas, families and products, price lists, discount lists, and unit groups. We're going to start with the unit group. I'm going to add a unit group of servicing. And what we need to ask ourselves is, what is the primary unit that a service is sold in? Now, for our example, we're going to sell services in groups of years. So my primary unit for that will be one year. When I save this, I can then assign different units for this to be sold in. So I, if I click on units, so we have decided that we want to sell our services in groups of one year, two year, or three year services. So year is already populated for us. If I hit add new unit, I'll say, give it a name. So I'll call this a two-year service. What is the quantity? Well, that is two lots of one year. So the quantity is two and the base unit is year. Now, if I hit save and new, I can create another one for a three-year service. And obviously that will be three years. So let's just double check our servicing is set up into one year, two year and three year services. Look at the units. Yes, they are. So what I can now do is create my products. For example, we're going to sell gold services or silver services for one, two or three years. So what we can do now is go in and create our products. So I'm going to add a product family to put my services into. So this will be called servicing. I'll put it in capital so I can find it easier. Obviously, you would want to keep the same convention as the rest of your system. I want to give it a product ID of servicing. There is no parent and let's just save that. So now I have a family to put my products into. I'm going to add a product which will be our gold service. Now, I can assign a nominal code. So each time a service is sold, is there a nominal code that that goes against in our accounting software? Now, I'm just going to put that as a dummy value. What is the tax code? Let's just say services are under a standard tax code. And the parent, i.e. which family is it going into, will be service. Ah. I realized I've made a small error. Very good learning point. Let's just close this and go back slightly. Until I can add something to my product family, I have to remember 
to publish my family. That's one thing. With the product catalog, nothing goes live until it's published. Highlight that and publish. And now I can go in and add my product. So let's call this a gold service. Product ID will be gold. Nominal code. Tax code was T1. The parent should now be there. There it is, servicing. And this is where you start to assign your unit groups. So what is a service sold in? Well, we go to our unit group. We called our unit group servicing. We have to also give it a default unit. So each time a user picks servicing, is it going to be the one year, the two year or a three year service that defaults? Let's just say we're going for the middle ground. So we'll say our default unit is two years. It can be changed, but it's just a good idea to have a default unit in there. Well, you actually have to have a default unit in there. And decimals supported is a very important one. Decimal supported defines the lowest portion of your product that you can sell. For example, if this was a four pack of beer and you would allow someone to sell half of a four pack, you could put in, I will allow one decimal place. So people can pick 0 0.5 packs. I personally don't like that approach. I would prefer to have it assigned in my unit groups, but you can, if you want, allow users to sell parts of one of your products. So let's just save that. Now you will notice that we haven't set a default price list yet. Until we put this on a price list, we cannot sell it. So what we've done is we've set up a product called Gold Service, which can be sold in one year, two year, or three year portions, if you like, but we haven't assigned any prices to them yet. But let's go ahead and add this to a price list to enable our users, our salespeople, to sell these services alongside our tires. So what we need to do is go back to our product list. Some users will find this frustrating. Anytime you access the product catalog and go into products, it takes you back to the sales area of CRM. So you do have to navigate back to the settings to find the product catalog to do some of the admin functions. But we'll go into our price lists and we'll just create a new price list here called, let's call it service. Let's call it servicing. Now notice you can have start dates and end dates on your price list. You can also have this on your product, so products can have a validity. So you might have a set of Easter eggs to sell, which are only available up until the week after Easter. You can do that. Or you can have price lists, so you can have all your products and they can be on a 2015 price list. Then they can be on a 2016 price list and a 2017 price list, each of which has different prices, which makes it a lot easier to administer. You don't need to create your products each and every time. So to show you how this works, I'm going to to save this price list and then I'm going to add my product to my price list in a unit group and give it a price. So servicing. If our users or our customers, let's find our product here, take a gold service and the unit is one year, we are going to charge them £80. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is add a two year service of gold. So again, gold. Now this one will be a two year and we'll give them a bit of a discount, so we'll do 150. And so on. So you should see how this is starting to build up. So I'll pause the video, I'll go and add the silver and put some prices in there and we'll come back to you in just a second. Okay, so here we are, we've set up the fact that our product can be sold in each of those units for each of these prices. Now do bear in mind, you can have multiple products on multiple price lists. So you may have another price list for example, complimentary servicing, if we wanted to give it away, we could have each of our items on there for free. Or we could have a fleet servicing where you have a much bigger price, but you get a lot more for your money. Or you can have a servicing 2018 price list where your prices go up or go down. So different products can appear on more than one price list. And when the salesperson is selling it, once they've picked the price list, then they can pick the product from it. 
So to show you how that works, let's go in and add our servicing to an opportunity. So here we go. Jim Haddo is looking for some tires. We come down. So I can see here, Jim has an opportunity at the moment for a pair of these tires, but he also wants to look at perhaps buying some servicing from us. So let's go to his record. Let's add a new opportunity for him. So add a new opportunity. He's looking for a service. He's got £150 to spend. Let's create that. Let's go ahead and look at his opportunity. And let's go in and see what we've got available for this customer. So, this is how the salesperson would use it. They go into the price list and say, for example, I'm looking to see how much our services are. So I'll look for that price list. Now the revenue, what this allows you to do is allows the user to identify how much money that is worth. Or, because we've already set our prices on the price list, we want to change it to system calculated. So I'll change that. Let's add an item, so it'll be an existing product. Because it's a servicing price list, it's going to show me all the items that are on that. So I can say, well, we've gone through the features and benefits of each of the services, and Jim has decided he's going to take the gold service for two years. And there it is, it's added. It's worked out, well, that's £150. Remember, when we were setting up the products and product family, we said that everything will be under tax code T1, which is 20%. So there we are. Price per unit is £150, plus 20% of that is tax is £30, gives an extended amount of... Of 180. So that shows you how the products work with the unit groups which work with the price lists to enable you to get quite a lot of power out of this. Because we've now got a record in here of what Jim wants but we can also use all of the out of the box functionality. If I want to create a quote based on that there it is. I'll create a quote. There's my quote created. If I've got this hooked up to document generation, document management, I can issue that quote to the customer by paper. I can email this out to them. Whatever I like to do, but I have a full record of which services, which units are available and how much that costs and how much that is going to cost the customer. Hope you enjoyed that. But what I'd like to do is just extend this just a slight bit further by showing you the product properties. The services it came in gold and silver and you can buy one, two or three years. But when you're buying tires, we also, in our case, give you the choice of selecting your fuel efficiency and your wet grip. Just to show you that, in action, I'll go to Jim's other opportunity, the one where he's looking for some tires. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to take this product off and put it back again to show you what I mean. So in this case, Jim's looking for some tyres. So the salesperson selects the tyres price list and it's gone to system calculated. So what we'll do is say, I want to find a product that's on that list and I'm going to add it to Jim's record. So let's go for pair of these tires and notice it has a red mark there because we've set this in the product family to say any products in this family require extra information so if I click on it it says what's the fuel efficiency so we'll just say any and what's the wet grip they're looking for B very powerful and also quite simple to set up. Now, the truth of the matter is, once a product family is published, you can't actually add any properties to it. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we had to set this up first. So what I'm going to do is clone this. But hopefully what you'll take from it, and it is a, a fundamental point, is you must have your product catalogue planned correctly before you set this up. So what I'm going to do is clone this so I can take a copy of this family. Now it's not a major issue because what I could do, in fact I will do, is I'm going to call this tires one, is once I've created this, I'm going to reassign all the products to the new product family. Let's call this tires one. The unit group on that will be tires. Just as before, default unit will be pair. Again, our decimal supported will be zero. While strictly speaking, you could sell half of a pair of tires. We don't want that in our system because we have a unit which is single tire or pair of tires 
our full set. So I'm going to put this as decimal supported zero. I'll give this a quick save just to make sure. And now I can add my new product property. So I'll go in here and you'll get an idea of how powerful this is. What we're going to do is add the noise. Now I'm going to say this is required. So any time any salesperson adds a record of a tire, the system will require them to f complete which noise option they want to go for before they continue. So that's what the required means. Can the opportunity go ahead without this information being filled in? The data type is very, very important. For fuel efficiency and wet grip, we had that put in as an option set. So when you click it, it shows you the options that you can pick. We're going to do the same thing here, but you can have whole number, line of text, floating point number, decimals, or option sets set up as your product properties. So thinking about your products and how they're classified and how they're set up in your purchase order management system, you can reflect it in here. In this case, it'll be an option set. So I'm going to choose that and save it so I can allow the options to be set. The first one... is maximum allowable. The middle option is moderately quiet and very quiet. And now when someone picks any product that's under this product family, the system is going to ask them to set the fuel efficiency, the noise and the wet grip. So let's publish this. I can create an opportunity. Let's see if that one's still there. I go looking for some tires. As well as these items that are on that opportunity, I'm going to add the demo ones. Let's say Jim's interested in the demo ones. There we go. Now, because this tire is on the product family which requires us to include noise when we edit here it is so fuel efficiency we'll go for e noise we'll go for moderately quiet and wet grip we'll go for b and there you go that is how you can do product properties now just to show you the difference demo tire is in one product family and in that family it requires three properties this one is in a different family and that requires two so you can have quite a complex setup to your product catalogue. And because it's in Dynamics 365 overall, you can use the full reporting capability of it. You can use document management. You can include this information in marketing activities. You can report on it financially. There's so many things you can do. But hopefully you found that interesting. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like. Follow the channel. And if you want any more information, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you.